This video shows the process of performing a resection with a Leica C10 scanner. Just like any other job, we'll begin by managing, going to the projects, and creating our new project. Give the project a name. In this case, I'm going to simply call it resection, and hit enter. And then give additional information, such as a description, so we know what the job is at a later date. As well as information such as the creator of the job. You have the option to store the data internally to the internal hard drive or to an external USB device connected to the USB port on the scan. Select the device and click store. At this point, we could import our control data or manually input the control data. Select the control points icon from the management screen. Our project shows up and the number of control points available. If we wanted, we could click the import button to import a file from a flash drive connected to the USB port on the scanner. In our case, we're simply going to manually add points by clicking the down arrow and selecting data. Here we'll click the new button to input our first point. Our first coordinate value or our first control point will be point number 101. We'll input the northing value as well as the easting value. followed by the elevation, I'll store this point and add another control point, adding in point number 102. Again, we'll enter the northern easting, followed by the elevation of this control point. Once all of the information is input properly and completely, we'll store this point as well. With our two points now entered and part of our project, we'll continue. and exit back to the main screen. So like any project, we'll start by checking the status, the laser level plummet, and we'll make sure our level bubble is within tolerance of the instrument, which is typically less than three seconds on the tilt L and three seconds on the tilt T. Once the instrument is level, we'll click the continue button to proceed. We'll exit out to the main menu where we can begin the process of scanning. Select our project. If the current project is not selected, click on the project name shown. Where you'll be taken to the project list so you can select the project and continue. Once into the main screen, you have three options for setup. You can continue which allows you to continue the scan world from the previous location. Setup, which allows you to do your resection or traverse functions. And standard setup, which allows you to pick target locations or change your scan world location. In our case, since we're doing a resection, we will use the setup option to input the resection data. Once in the resection screen, I'm going to input our station ID. Since our control points were 101 and 102, we'll start with a different numbering sequence. In our case, we'll put 501 as our current occupied position to the station ID and hit enter. The instrument height will be left blank or zero 
since we're doing a resection and not setting back up on this point or tying back into this point in any way, there's no real requirement to input the height of the instrument at this point. If we were tying back into this point or reoccupying this, we would want to measure down and take the height. We specify the type of resection, either a four or six parameter. Since we're doing two control points, it will be a four. Specify the first target ID, followed by the type of target we'll be shooting. In our case, we'll be shooting the bottom target on a twin target pole with the extension. When possible, I prefer to use the bottom target because it's closer to the ground, therefore closer to the control point when possible. So we'll select twin bottom with extension. And it shows our height at 1.47 meters, and we'll pick T to pick the target location. Once the target is in sight, use the zoom functions to zoom in, and the seek function to locate the center of the target. Once the center is found, you'll click the enter button, the arrow key to the right. That target has now been located. Proceed to the next target. 102 is our next control point. So we'll select 102 and again pick the twin target bottom with extension, verifying the height at 1.476 feet. Repeat the process of locating the target through the scanner window. Again, using the zoom and seek functions to identify the target as closely to the center as possible. Once the center is located, again, we'll hit the enter button or enter arrow to the right. Now see that we have two targets identified. We can proceed with the resection by clicking the calc button. At this point, the scanner will turn to the first target. Two passes on the first target. Turn to the second target do two passes on the second target and display the, re display the result from the resection calculated. Once all four scans have been completed, the resection result will be displayed. You'll see the station ID, the calculated northing, easting, and height based on the targets shot. My first rule is to look at this data and make sure comes to make sure something shows up. Then I go to the target list and view each of the targets to ensure that they a look like targets and b. The circle is centered on the crosshairs in the display. If I'm satisfied with both of these, I can then proceed to the sigmas, writing down the values displayed in my field book in case there's any discrepancy or questions later about what happened or what was computed. When we're satisfied with the results, we can click the set button to set this resection be given a warning about the configured setup accuracy not being achieved, basically saying that our results were not within the specified tolerance. Our results were within or under two hundredths of a foot in all directions. Therefore, I'm satisfied with these and I will continue storing the setup anyway. Now taken to the scan window. If we wanted to advance to another target either another twin target or another type of target, we could do so at this point before beginning the scan. In order to accomplish this, we would click the down arrow and specify target. We're going to create a new target. So we'll give it a target ID and then tell it the target type. Most commonly, this procedure would involve a twin target pole with a specified height. I'm simply shooting a black and white target affixed to the side of a metal structure in order to show how this procedure works. Pick the target from the video image since we have not at this point completed. 
completed a scan. So we'll specify the target type, the pick from video, and now we will pick T to pick the target location. Just as we did before, we'll use the zoom and seek functions to locate the center of the target. When the center has been located, we'll click enter to lock that in and then tell it to continue. The scanner will now scan the target. Just as we saw before, we have the ability to view our target or get additional information. I always start by viewing the target to make sure it looks like the type of target shot and the data or coverage on the target is adequate with the center of the target being roughly in the center of the crosshairs. By clicking info, we can get the computed northern easting and elevation as well as the distance from the scan position. We can then store this as a target to be used for future reference. At this point, we're taken back to the scan parameters where we can specify our field of view, our resolution for the scan, and the image settings. When everything is set to your standards or specifications, we can either click scan or scan an image to collect the scan data as well as the images. Our section is now complete.